Now, I know the title might be controversial. Plenty of other studios do amazing action. Wit, Mapper, Production IG, Bones, Trigger. But the consistency with which Ufotable puts out action animation that rivals Makoto Shinkai animating food is just something unmatched in the industry. So how did a studio named after a funky table end up producing scenes like this? Ifootable was founded in the year 2000 by Hikaru Kondo and some other former staff of Telecom Animation Film, a studio that worked on a lot of Western cartoons including Chip and Dale, Batman the Animated Series, Animaniacs, and the 1994 Spider-Man Animated Series. The Fletching Studio went on to animate the final season of Visor Crazy in 2002, presumably because they'd already worked on it while under Telecom Animation. It might come as a surprise to newer anime fans that Ufotable originally worked on a lot of sci-fi and comedy shows full of zany Japanese humor with animation to match. Ufotable was highly experimental in its early years working with claymation and, more importantly, different management structures. Ufotable attempted to be as flat as they could be, highlighted in their structure when making Mana be straight, dispensing with the traditional director role and giving each department equal weighting. For instance, elevating the scriptwriter to story director, character designer to visual director, lead animator to layout director, and the nominal actual traditional director to technical director. This quirky management structure also made its way into Ufotable's first really big hit, Garden of Sinners. When approached by Anaplex to create a trilogy of films to adapt Karan of Kyokai, Ufotable said instead, how about seven? And then proceeded to put seven different directors in charge of seven different movies. In fact, the director for the final movie, Shinsuke Takizawa, is actually a pen name for five different directors who returned from early installments of the franchise. But even with this seemingly chaotic structure, it's here that we start to see the action choreography and use of 3D environments that Ufotable are now known for. If you haven't seen the movies or clips before, let me just say that the action scenes still hold up 16 years later in 2023 even if they do seem a little dated compared to Ufotable's latest works. The fight in movie 5, released in 2008, between Ryogi Shiki and Araya Soren is a clear precursor to fights in Fate Zero, with the whirling camera and frenetic action taking place in an entirely 3D environment. But if Garden of Sinners made people pay attention to the studio, it was their work on the Fate franchise that really put them at the forefront of anime fans' minds. Starting with Fate Zero and that incredible fight that was Kiritsugu vs Kirei at the end of the show, Ufotable managed to showcase what's now their trademark style of combining slick animation with flying camera work in 3D environments. They went on to animate Fate Unlimited Blade Works, or as some fans dub it, Unlimited Budget Works. Ufotable also animated the Fate Heavens Feel movies, meaning that two of Fate Stay Night's major roots and its prequel were all animated by Ufotable. But there is another reason behind the quality of Ufootable's works. Looking over their back catalogue, you might realise that they only tend to put out one or two shows per year, or with Garden of Sinners, seven movies over three years. Other major studios often put out one or two shows per season. You see, unlike other major studios, Ufootable tries to do as much as they can in-house. The 3D backgrounds, in-house. The animation, in-house. The compositing, putting all those fancy effects in, like at the end of Season 2 of Demon Slayer, in-house. It's really that last bit, the compositing, where Ufootable shines. Their animators have an incredible grasp of lighting. Something you might notice is that a lot of modern Ufootable's best fights take place at night or in darkness. It allows their lighting to shine brighter, with bright sparks and other effects that would be otherwise subdued in daytime. Combining these effects with their dynamic camera work results in some of the most incredible fights to grace our screens. Now, they can't do everything in-house. For instance, Yuki Kajiura made the music for Garden of Sinners and went on to write music for further Ufootable shows, such as Fate Zero and Demon Slayer. If her name rings a bell, it might be because she produced music for that relatively unknown anime, Sword Art Online. Now, it's not to say that Ufootable doesn't have its problems. Their insistence on in-house work and relatively small staff numbers mean that they can only really focus on one or two projects at a time, and reports have come in that Ufootable has declined various offers based on financial or time constraints. The adaptation of God Eater ran into massive delays, eventually airing the final four episodes six months late. The studio also sometimes relies too much on CGI. The fight mentioned earlier between Ryogi and Araya in Garden of Sinners was entirely directed in CG, then given to animators to trace over, resulting in a high-speed fight with whirling camera angles that is very difficult to follow. 
Or alternatively, look at Demon Slayer Mugen Train, where the fight against Enmu, the, uh, the train demon, looked like something out of a PS2 video game. Ufootable also typically adapts existing works. The majority of their modern catalogue is either an adaptation of a game, a manga, or a visual novel. This does lead to problems when the story and pacing face issues that can't be papered over by the incredible animation. You'd only need to look at criticism of the story in Katsugeki Token Rambu or the pacing of Demon Slayer Season 1. And of course, studio founder Hikaru Kondo was sentenced to three years in prison for tax evasion to the tune of over 1 million US dollars. Now he said it was to protect the studio from future financial downturn, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know about that one, chief. Problems aside, Ufotable today stands as one of the most recognizable studio names in anime. Their fate on the Fate franchise and Demon Slayer have solidified their reputation as gods of the dynamic action scene, utilizing their mastery over CG environments and incredible compositing to its fullest. The studio knows how to strategically deploy their budget in order to ensure that the final fight of any series is always spectacular. Their highs heavily outweigh their lows, and when they get it right, which they often do, you come away feeling mind blown. So that's it on this video for Ufotable. Next up is Studio Trigger. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun. Remember to like and subscribe if you liked the video, because, uh, you know, it gives me a dopamine rush. And it helps the channel.